Following along with this, you've seen how we have used Illustrator to create some vector base artwork of a medical illustration, how we've used a pen tool and strokes and blended them together to make these vessels. Um, and we just have some nice space art. So next, the fun is gonna begin. We're gonna import this over into Photoshop and then we're gonna open up in Photoshop and start painting. And it's really gonna come to life. Like right now, it's pretty flat, it's pretty boring, but we're gonna make this pop. Okay, so go to File, Export, Export As. A few of our settings. First of all, make sure you're for, make sure you're in the right location. Then make sure your format is changed to Photoshop. Change artboards, and then name it properly. Whatever you need to name it as. I think I already have one in there, and I don't want to save over it, so I'm going to name it as number two. And then I'm going to hit export. Dialog box pops up, and a few things you're going to do. One, make sure it's at CMYK for now. This is for printing. RGB would be if you were using it solely for some digital marketing. Um, we're going to leave it at CMYK. Make sure you turn this to high resolution. If not, you're going to see a lot of pixels. Do not leave it at these low resolutions. We're going to write the layers. I do not want to flatten the image. No, no, no. Yes. Maximum editability. And we're going to leave all of this the way it is and hit OK. So it's going to write the file. Give it a second. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a Photoshop, a layered Photoshop file similar to the layered file um, of our Illustrator. Okay, so here it is, this number two. Added 01 because of the artboard since I had said use artboard, but you need to have that on. So I'm going to hit open. Make sure I'm selecting the PSD file. You've got them all named the same. You can accidentally open the wrong file. So hit open. So now I've got this great little base. And if I zoom in, you can see, you know, it gets a little bit pixelated and that's fine. But overall, if I'm looking at it the way it's gonna be printed, it's, it's going to be great. So we're gonna do a few cleanup things. One, I don't need all these layers from my vessels. So I'm gonna select my vessels. I've got my right hand on my digital tablet and my left hand on my keyboard. It's really important in getting coordinated with using a digital tablet. So I'm gonna select my vessels with my left hand, go up. I know you can't see this, but you're gonna go all the way down to the ground, the towards the bottom, and say merge group, merge group. So now it's just one. Same thing for wrinkles, merge that group. So now I've got these four labeled files, which is really nice. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shrink it down. I don't need it this large. I created it very large in vector, knowing I was gonna bring it over into raster, um, but I don't need it that large. So I'm gonna hit vessels, hit shift with my left hand, hit hand base, and now with my left hand again, I'm gonna go command T, so that make, lets me transform this hand layer, and I'm gonna shrink it down. I don't need it as large as it was much smaller, and then hit return when I'm done. If you're working on a new version, you don't need to hit shift, it maintains your ratio. If you're working on an old version, you may need to hit shift, or you're gonna get something weird. Do not let that happen, and don't eyeball it either. I'll be able to see it a mile away, and undo. All right, when you're done with it, scaled properly, maintaining its ratio, hit return. Okay. Great, you can hit save, command S, just making sure we're saving our work as we go. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fix the blood vessels in Photoshop. So we've merged that layer, all's good there. But when you look at them, they're like really sharp and that's weird. Such an easy fix. We're gonna go over to our tools panel while we're on our vessel layer. And you can use a combo of the blur tool and the smudge. It's one app doesn't do another. Let's just show you what the blur tool does. I, the space bar is your best friend with your left hand so that you can move things around. And then command minus and command plus. So use those a lot. I also use the right and left bracket. Right bracket makes it larger, left bracket makes it smaller. So don't forget those. 
So you can smud, uh, blur these. And that's working pretty good. Sometimes I like to get in and use the smudge because I kind of want to like smudge this highlight over some of it. Although I really like the way that one's looking, but like right there, I don't like that at all. So you can get in there and kind of smudge some of that line out and then smudge that highlight like up onto it. Now be careful because look, you can smudge outside of your vessels. So just be careful as you're doing them and go around and use blur and smudge until you have fixed each of these edges. I'm gonna go back to blur, that was working faster for me. And you want all these smoothed out, pop back into the smudge if you need to. And just, you can see I'm kind of like lightly moving it around. Like you just gotta kind of keep working with it. You're smudging this paint. It's basically what you're doing, essentially. This paint, just like you would if you were smudging it around on a canvas. Okay, I'm gonna go up and work on this one a little bit. It is really out of whack. I can always paint over that. Remember, we know how to paint. But I'm just kind of trying to get like a base done without that, like a quick and dirty, just kind of a quick fix. Good. Go up to these guys. Don't forget about them. Same thing. Rotating that edge out so it looks more natural. I get it. You don't necessarily know what the natural look of a blood vessel is, but you should kind of understand the natural look of branches in a tree, and it's relatively similar. Good. And back out. Make sure we haven't forgotten any. I think we've got them all. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So uh, once you've kind of fixed and blurred these, let's add a few highlights. I think that's really fun. We're going to call it Vessel Highlights. And just like creating a glossy finish on the surface of say a sphere, you can create glossy finishes on vessels. And what this will do is in a matter of a few minutes, it's gonna make these look really custom and nice. Okay, so brush, white, you're not gonna see these blood vessels, so it's not like I'm trying to necessarily say, oh, what color is my light source and whatnot. I just want to paint some light. And I'm gonna start with this big vessel because that's the one that would grab as much light as possible. I'm gonna do kind of similar to I would if it was a sphere. I'm gonna go right over, whoop, undo. You can turn down your flow. I'm gonna show you how to fix some of these things too and your opacity, but I'm gonna go in. And I just love a little extra dot. Now I don't love this, that looks kind of funny. So you can then come in and again, use your blur or your smudge or also your eraser. And just kind of paint some of those moments out. Like if you're like, oh, that looks kind of funny. I don't want it to be so tight. Now look how quickly that looks like a vessel if I want to get it really darker and I'm like, oh, this look really glossy moment right there. That's fine, just paint a little more in. Okay, so I want you to paint a few more. You need to have a, a good amount in here, three or four. And you want them to have a little bit of similarity, but you don't want them to look identical, right? Like I'm not trying to, I'm just gonna kind of add, kind of at the same level, 
and you can see I'm like painting one and then kind of going back with a few more brush strokes to get it a little deeper. You can always go in and change that. And there's a million different ways to do a glossy highlight on, on, highlight on something, especially something that isn't really seen like blood vessels. So this is how we're gonna do it. Oop, that one got a little too far over. Wobbly. Okay, and then back out. And like, look how nice, especially this one big one. You know, I may spend more time on doing some more, um, making the brush bigger so you can see what I'm pointing to, but it's just a quick way of making these look more natural, which is fun. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you how to use a folder and mask some of this out. Like we've got these harsh edges, we don't want that. So I'm gonna grab both of these layers using shift, click, and then I'm gonna hit on the folder. I'm gonna call this vessels so I know what the heck I'm working with. And then I'm going to hit this mask key. Oops, I did it twice on accident. Now what a mask does is it makes it look like it's being erased, but it's just hiding. So what I want to do is hide the edges of these vessels so that they just kind of blend into the hand. In reality, there's like a million vessels and they'd all connect, but we're not doing that. We're just showing those basic ones. So grab your brush, make sure black is forward. And I like to make my brush kind of large, at least for this, because I want to paint it out really soft. And then now notice when I paint how it's starting to erase those vessels some at the end. I'm going to undo. I'm going to turn my opacity up. And I'm going to pretty firmly get just the ends out. So it's painting black over here to hide what's in this folder underneath it, which are those blunt edges. And just the way I have my settings and how I like to draw with my tablet, I, I'm kind of like going back over that. All right, I'm going to do the same thing down here at the bottom. Notice it is not doing the hand base because I'm only doing what's inside this folder. I'm not doing that. That's on a whole nother layer. Now look, it's already starting to look really, really good. Um, hit save, command S. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint some hand details. Okay, and a way I like to do this, like you could just start painting and I could make this new layer and I like to start with the shade personally, usually first. Um, turn that to multiply. Obviously, and remember that is because then if we use a black and we paint over this color, it's going to blend it with the color below it so that it's going to look like a dark version of the skin tone instead of just a foggy black. So make sure we have black. We have no opacity there, but if you had some opacity, see how you can see that tan through there? Okay, we're going to undo all of this silliness. And in this shade layer now, I want to paint just a little, just a little around the edges of the hand so that those fingers really look like cylinders and there's a little bit more depth. Now, if I go in and just start painting, like I'm going to paint into everything else. I want to contain that within the hand. So remember how we've made selections before. A really quick way to make this selection is on our base hand layer, with our left hand, we're gonna hit Command, and with our right hand, we're gonna click on this thumbnail. Now notice I have my dancing ants now surrounding that hand. So now anything I paint is gonna be within the hand. Command Z, um, and that's gonna help us do some really quick painting around the hand. So go back to the shade layer, you gotta paint in the right layer. If you accidentally start painting while you are in the wrong layer, you're gonna have to undo. You will not be able to edit that. It will not come off. So go to your shade layer. With black, I'm gonna turn this way down and way down, and I'm just gonna do a little bit of painting around 
to get my hand to look more um, round, like real depth, right? Like you would have some shade, like just like if you were painting this onto a canvas. Okay, and I can already tell right now I do not like the black as much. So another trick is uh, hit your option key on a Mac while you've got your brush. I'm gonna select this hand and then I'm gonna move it over to a dark brown version. And that's the color I'm gonna use instead of black now and it'll give it a little bit more warmth. And I'm doing some real basic, if I was gonna have kind of an upper left um, light source, I'm not addressing a light source much with this. This isn't really necessarily about a light source. This is about painting, learning a little bit of vector illustration and how you can tie in some vector illustration with um, raster illustrations and what that can mean. Now I'm looking down at my hand too, by the way, so you need to as well. That's your best um, model, which is one of the reasons why I use this as a lesson, because your hand is there and you've got it to use. So I can also see kind of at this junction of the hand is where my knuckle is. And based on my semi-ish light source, if this was a sphere, this bottom right of the sphere of my knuckle is what's going to be dark. So I'm going to paint a little bit, just a little, just on this side, like there was a sphere right here showing this knuckle. Just like if I was painting a sphere. Hmm, that should be pretty good for this. Now this hand, this thumb takes on a much darker when I'm looking kind of down at my hand. And you can see right away, look, just that little bit of shading that we've done, it's already starting to look like a hand. Now, the last thing I kind of want to make sure I'm addressing, I don't, is my tendons running from the tops of my fingers down. And there, if they ran straight, then the right side of them should have a little bit of shade. So if this is my meat point, I'm going to draw some shade to that point. I'm not going to address it much with the thumb because the thumb should just have a lot of darkness as it turns that corner. A little too dark. And just keep painting. This is just like you were painting. And if the blood vessels get in your way a lot, like that's kind of annoying. Or if you need to erase something, come over. You don't like the way that looked. You can see my knuckles really well. Then come back in and paint them a little bit more. Erase them, paint them until you're much more comfortable. Trying to get it pretty close with that shade where I want it to be. And that kind of right side of it. And I'm going to cover this some with um, some highlights as well. That, okay. Not so bad. Now, I painted the shade around. I also want to paint this shade on top of this nail. So I'm going to move my shade layer. I'm going to move it up on top of my wrinkles. And I am now going to paint just a little bit inside these nails. And I wanted it on top of the nails because like you see that, right? Like that's there. Your whole hand sort of dives in at this crease. We're almost done with shade, which I find to be so much fun. Just a little bit. 
got that beautiful sharp line already done for us. Okay. So Command D is going to take off these dancing ants, right? And now we can go in and do some highlights. Now you may need your hi highlights if you don't want them to go everywhere. Um, that's kind of up to you on how you work. I don't necessarily need everything selected, but if you do need it, just remember you can go to Command and add that in. Um, and then we can paint some highlights. So I'm going to go back to my paint. I'm going to option select and I'm going to move way up so that I get a highlight version of my skin. And I'm going to come in for a few little moments And while I'm in my highlight layer, I'm going to paint now kind of that left side of my knuckle and those tendons. Hide. Very subtle. I'm going to draw a little bit down my finger so that I've got a little bit of highlight that ties in with that. A little bit on the side of my thumb. You could come in here. I'm going to Command D to get the dancing ants off. And you could really paint some glossy highlights if you wanted, like on these nails. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on those because I want to keep going, but you could paint and paint and just keep painting. So I've got this decent hand. I've got this nice set of vessels. And we're going to do a few more finishing touches with adding a cast shadow and the background. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to drag it all the way down below hand base and I'm going to call it Oops, cast shadow, spell it correctly. And then I'm going to change it to multiply, even though it's not going to be on anything right now. And I'm going to paint some shadows. Now, if you can't see them, that's going to kind of bug me. Let's paint a background too before we even start that. So BG for background. Grab my paint bucket, make sure I have a pure white and just dump it. Done. Now I have a white background. That helps us see a little bit. Go back to my cast shadow multiply layer. Grab my paintbrush, have it kind of soft, have it kind of turned down, have it a decent size. Now, if it was on a white, could I use black for my shadow? Sure, but probably the better option is to grab a deep color from my hand. Very deep color. And I'm gonna paint a shadow now below this hand, like it's casting, like this hand is sitting kind of on a little bit of white paper for this. And watch how quickly this is gonna turn into a hand for us. I'm going to deepen it in a few little spots. I'm going to kind of go all the way around. Whoop. And add some real depth in and look, it's like popping off the page now. love a good custom shadow. I think that it can make or break some uh, an illustration. Make it always. So and again, watch how quickly. Ooh, mine's gotten stuck. Undo. Watch how quickly this transforms our illustration. And we're almost done. Whoop. I don't know what is happening with mine, but we'll undo those. 
And we're just going to paint a little bit more on this far side to get it to really anchor down, get a lot on that palm so that it really sits in that moment right there. A little bit up in here because you would see that. Now look, look how quickly we've got that. Now the only thing that bugs me is this funny arm and how it just stops. So the easiest way to fix that is put everything in a folder and mask it. Grab all these layers. Actually, I'm going to leave the background layer. Grab vessels down to cast shadow. Group them up. Add my mask. Black brush. Kind of large. And I like for this type of masking, when I know I'm trying to get rid of an edge, I keep it usually at 100. And now I'm going to paint along this bottom edge and just kind of smooth it out a little bit. And hit save. Voila. Now you've got this really nice medical illustration and it didn't take you forever. And you've got details with some highlights and wrinkles. Um, I usually like to move my wrinkle layer on top of my vessels. Don't dump it into your vessel. Put it on top of the vessel. Because I think that that makes it look very realistic. And if you need to add some more in, like I want to paint a little bit more shade in um, at this point. Around the knuckle maybe. Just noticing that I didn't address it much. Make sure I'm not going out of it or select your hand so that you're not. And I can always paint, whoa, command undo. I can always paint a little bit more. You can always go back. It's a painting. You're just painting it. And because you're doing it on all these layers, you're really giving yourself the opportunity to edit very easily and create a lot of depth for yourself. Um, so good job. Hit save and you're done.